So we have one more component to do, and it is this, which is a diode. Um, it doesn't look like much. Uh, it's just a piece of plastic with wires coming out the end. Often don't do it in class because people think that the experiment is going wrong, but we'll see what happens when we do it. So I've got to connect it up again in my circuit exactly the same as before. So I've got my diode connected um, with the ammeter. So this is the circuit I've got now. I've got the power supply connected to the ammeter, connected to the diode, and then back to the power supply. Uh, and I need to connect my voltmeter across the diode like this. OK, so that's all connected up as per this diagram. So I can measure the potential difference and the current. Now. I can't just go up in steps of one volt in this um, because I've discovered that if you try and put, um, if you try and turn this up, what happens is the current gets too big. I have to keep the current down to a certain value. So I'm going to try and go up in steps of 0.1 volt, but I might end up going up in steps of a certain amount of current or seeing what we get. So let's take the first reading: 0. Point, well, 0 amps at 0 0.00 volts. Okay, let's turn it up to 0. 0.1 volt. OK, 0 0.1 volt and 0 amps. 0 0.2 volts, 0 amps. 0 0.3 volts, 0 amps. Nothing seems to be happening. This is why people tend to think that it's broken. 0 0.4 volts, 0 0.03 amps. We're starting to get something happen. 0 0.5 volts, 0 0.26 amps. OK, 0 0.6 is 1.09. And let's go to 0 0.7. Ooh, I can see things are starting to get a bit hot. Ooh, I'm not sure if I can go to 0 0.7. 0 0.7, I can't even get to 0 0.7, is 4.66 amps, which is as much as that can take. 4.7 amps, let's turn that down. And this is getting quite hot, okay? So 4.70 amps was about as high as I got, and I couldn't even get to 0 0.8. Okay, if I had, this would have basically caught fire, I think. Um, so let's get rid of these. And let's work backwards. So let's turn our power supply connections around. And let's do the same in reverse. So 0, 0.0, well, I've got no volts, no current, so 0, 0.00. Um, this time I'm going to try and go up in bigger steps. So minus 1 volt, minus 6. OK, so minus 1 volt, 0 amps. Minus 2 volts, 0 amps. Minus 3 volts, 0 amps. Getting fed up with this, let's just go straight to minus 6. Minus 6 volts, 0 amps. So when I've got a minus connection, negative connection to the diode, there's no current flowing. That's what we mean by um, it only lets current flow in one direction. It only lets current flow when I connect it this way around. It doesn't let any current flow this way. Let's calculate the resistance. Uh, well, 0 over 0, I can't really do. 0 0.10 divided by 0. Again, I get a maths error. Anything divided by 0, I can't do. 0.4 divided by 0 0.03 is 13.3. divided by 0 0.26, 1.92, 0 0.55. 0 0.7 divided by 4.7, 0 0.15. Okay, so let's have a quick think about um, what this value should be. Resistance is how difficult it is to get current flowing. We apply voltage and get nothing. That must mean it must be very, very difficult to get current flowing. So this is sort of like infinite resistance. You apply voltage, no current flows. That means it's infinitely difficult to get the current to flow. Similarly, in reverse, we apply voltage and we get no current. So it's basically infinite resistance. Okay, the math teachers won't like that, but um, that's how we can think of it. Very, very high resistance. Um, and then the resistance suddenly, when we get to this put of 0 0.4, 0 0.7 value, the resistance suddenly comes down. Okay, so it starts off at relatively high, 13, 1.9, dropping away to virtually nothing at 0 0.7 volts. So let's plot that on another graph. Let's disconnect everything. Okay, new bit of graph paper. Now I'm going to plot again 
current and potential difference. Now my potential difference has to go up to well, 0 0.7 and down to minus 6 and the current has to go up to plus 5, 0.4.7 and down, well, down to 0 minus, so minus something. Um, so I don't really have to put my origin in the middle but let's just sort of see where things would fit. Um, if I pick the same scale I can get 6 across so if I start the origin there, minus 2, 4, 6, and then I can go to plus 2, so my 0 0.7 would be about here somewhere. Um, so that looks okay for that. Now if I go upwards, if I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, oh no, I'm sorry, I need to go to 5 amps, don't I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 amps, and down to minus, well, whatever. So if I start from here, I can go up to plus 5 and down to whatever. That fits. So let's put my origin at that point. Okay, so this is zero, this is minus two, minus four, five. So this is current in amps. And just for a bit good measure, we go to minus one, minus two. We have to keep the same scale, we can't change scales from one side to the other side to the other, but I'm not actually going to get any current at all. So, what do we need to plot? Well, there's quite a lot that are very easy to plot. Zero gives me zero. In fact, all the way up to 0 0.3. Well, that's one volt there. 0 0.3 would be... That's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 would be there. So, all of those up to there are zero. 0 0.4 is 0 0.03. Well, it's not even 0 0.1. This would be 0 0.1, so it's still virtually zero. 0.5 is now 0.26. Well, that's 1. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.26 is now there. Okay, 1.09 is 0 0.06 volts. 0 0.06 volts is there. 1.09. So it's virtually 1.1. And 4.7 is that's at 0.7 volts. So that's up here, 4.7 was at 0.7 volts, 4.7. Okay, and let's look at the, going backwards, well, everything is on the axis, because I get zero current. So all of those were like that. Um, now that's really difficult to see what to plot. You've basically got um, a line here, which goes along the origin. And then a line which goes along the origin for a bit and then shoots off upwards. Okay, and it goes off. It never really gets to this point here. So the, the line comes down here and zooms along that way. So that's all we can draw. This part I can actually draw with a ruler because it's actually along the origin, along the axis. Okay, this part. Um, well. It's along here and then swoops upwards. Um, let's see if I can draw that. Okay, not my best line. It's a little bit wobbly at the top there, but I think I will leave that. Okay, so that is the characteristic graph for a diode. And you can see that its resistance is definitely not constant. It's got a very, very high resistance if you connect it in reverse. It's got a very high resistance to start with, but once you get to about 0.7 volts, so somewhere around the 0.7 volts, it really starts to conduct, and it conducts a very big current. Five amps is quite a lot. It was getting very, very hot. If I'd connect, if I'd have tried to turn the voltage up any further, I'd have either tripped the power supply or I would have probably melted the diode one or the other.